TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. I know y'all busy. It's Saturday. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If you happen to miss the lives, right here is the live channel. Right here is the live channel. I see I ain't got my live. My Twitch is not on here. Got to put my Twitch information on this channel. Um, it's probably on there somewhere. I don't know where it is. But anyway, I just figured out how to make... I just figured out how to make shorts through OBS. So, <coughs> I asked people. I was going to give people permission to do them on this page. But, hey, nobody replied. So, hey. I don't want to hear it later on. <laughs> uh, anyway, don't forget we do got the uh, Patreon as well. And we also got the Discord. If you're looking to follow me on any of these things, man, just go to the description box. It's a link tree in there. Hit that. Everything is there, man. This is Tox Teth Liverpool, UK. 1986. On Grand Granby Street with Michael Showers. Showers. Delroy Burris, R.I.P. and more. Okay, what's this about though? Documentary film on the Grand Bay Street front line of Toxas featuring Michael. Uh, Stephen Frencherton is this real foil cottage, the Grand Bay Street front line of the buzzing with people. Alright, it doesn't matter. Let's see. I'll title it myself. <laughs> You know what this is reminding me of right now? So far, I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's reminding me of an episode of Only Fools and Horses. Come on now, don't don't, don't just look like the van, but with four wheels, but in black. Come on. In the summer of 1981, blacks in the Liverpool aid community fought the police with petrol bombs. The government responded by appointing Cabinet Minister Michael Heseltine to generate employment in Merseyside. A task force was set up to this effect. Five years later, we returned to Merseyside to assess what benefits, if any, came to the black community. <laughs> Liverpool 8, we call the homelands. Okay, we call it. The task force and the Merseyside minister, Michael Heseltine, is to me, it's just one massive joke. And it, it reminds me very much of the old colonial days where when the natives uh, started to get very restless or when there was a problem, you sent in uh, your district um, councillor and he would go and find out what the natives wanted and he would solve the problem with a few beads and feathers and blankets and mirrors. Mm. Only in this case, the beads were promises of jobs and a few bribes. The mentality of every single British government that's ever been formed has been one of pretending black people aren't there. There's a great cliche about Liverpool and it's uh, everybody scouses and Liverpool is a, a multiracial society. Well, let me correct that because those people are talking a load of bullshit. The only multiracial society is here in Liverpool 8. Outside of Liverpool 8, it's like Pretoria. It's controlled by the South African white man because them over there come from here. It's the same people doing the same tricks. It wasn't until, until 1981. Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> 
every place has a backstory. It's how you come back from it. You get me? One, that the word Toxteth was really heard in Liverpool Eight. Um, we've always known it as South End, that is the South End of the city, yeah. or as L8. But I think one of the reasons why the word Toxteth is used so often now. Is Nevertheless, man, Liverpool will always remind me of home, even more now because it's called the South End. When I was in Evanston, that's what it was called, South the South End. It's less South End, Low End. That's that's tough. Is that when you pump 30 million into Toxteth? People straight away assume that you're investing into the riot zone to give people a chance for future. And all of this is false. Yeah, we're just coming now around onto Prince's Road, Prince's Boulevard, on which a quarter million pound was spent to renovate for people to pass through somewhere nice on the way home through the ghetto. The houses, as you can see, they are fine old houses where families could have been rehoused after renovation. And one of the first things that Heseltine wanted to do when he came to Liverpool was to pull down these buildings to build council estates on either side of this boulevard. As he said, to try and keep the community together. And Heseltine had no intention of keeping this community together as far as we're concerned. Heseltine came here to destroy. In 81, the thing that Heseltine talked about was to get commerce interested in putting money into small business ventures in which black people could be involved. But none of this ever reached fruition. Yeah. Okay, didn't it reach? Like, okay, I get it. Back then it was a little tougher. This was what, 40 years ago? Damn, 1981 was 40 years ago? 44 years ago? 43 years ago, 42, something like that. You know my mouth be crazy. It was a long time ago. Yeah, well now, honestly, 40 years is not that long ago. Honestly, how is it? I mean, I'm I'm almost positive Liverpool is a lot greater now. You know, since I'm an honorary scout and things of that nature, it gotta be right. On the Dock Road, passing the Albert Dock Complex, which was one of Heseltine's pet babies. This is where he poured most of the millions into. So when he talks of Toxteth receiving millions, this is the Toxteth he's talking about. The Toxteth which is in the city centre. So the Toxteth the South, which is right, right next door to the law courts. The Toxteth which is next door to the brand new police station. The fortified police station which you see. So, I mean that's the Toxteth he's talking So now Liverpool 8. About. Not the Toxteth where the riots were. I mean, in the construction of the dock complex, there were no black people involved. And now that the thing is in full swing, you'll find no black people involved in it. And certainly you'll no, never see them there in any management positions. Liverpool is not a, not a city like that. Unemployment among young blacks stands at the alarming rate of 85%. Here, an employment agency run by a local community group grapples with the problem. South Liverpool personnel has been in existence since 1972. It was an initiative that came about due to the high unemployment that was existing in the 70s when people could move from one job to another. I know a lot of people are going to be looking at this video like, oh, it's old, it's old, it's old. But like me coming from the outside looking in, it's like, how can I get with the new if I don't know the history? You know what I'm saying? So I always like to go back and look at the history of something that I like, enjoy, so people that I enjoy, a town that I like, you know what I'm saying, to see where it's, where it's come from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we found that black people are still facing discrimination in employment and training. And so the agency was set up under the Martin Luther King Foundation um, with regard to trying to break down those barriers um, regarding black people and, and employment. Um, since the 70s, nothing has really changed. I mean, you go to the place where basically this job is being offered. And like, it's not like, you know, they're not looking for what you're actually saying or what experience you have. It's like they're looking on your face, looking at your race, looking at how you dress. You know, and did you see those kind of aspects about your personality still? 
you know, and even though to maybe external still, they're not, they're not relevant to the job you're actually applying for. Man, it be like that now. That's why I don't work. <laughs> That's why I do not, I cannot jock a nine to five, bro. I used to work at the hotel. I worked there. I'm talking about I was putting in work because I wanted to grow in the company. You get what I'm saying? Like I was doing what I was supposed to do. But this is the thing. I was so good at the job that I was at. They didn't want to elevate me to another position because they would have to find somebody to replace me. And I'm an irreplaceable. So they bring people from the outside and give them the positions that are way underqualified. That they got to train. They got to do this. They got to do that. And that, sh that right there took me out the workforce completely took me out the workforce completely i'm not gonna go in here and deal with your politics i'm not gonna go here to look you let have you look me in my face and and lie to me every day like it's a wrap it's a dub it's a dub luckily not luckily silver lining uh covid hit i took started taking youtube serious and it was up from there because I ain't no way I could have spent another four years at, in the workforce, man. Not like that. Not how they be doing, man. They be they be moving crazy. I can't go. Huh? Well, um, we're now approaching. I think it's called Trans World now, but it was at one time another of Heseltine's babies. That is the Liverpool Garden Festival. I mean, the millions that the man pumped into this and the way he spoke about it so lovingly you'd have really thought that was going to do something for this city. I do not know of anybody who has benefited in any way from Heseltine's Garden Festival. I mean, we laughed at him, literally laughed at him when he came to Liverpool and told us what he intended to do. We asked him of what consequence was a garden festival to people who were living in rat-infested housing people who were walking the streets and being harassed by police, people who were being ignored when it came to jobs, people who had very little hope of not just a future for themselves, but very little hope of a future for their children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wanted to try and get into the Garden Festival. You wanted to try and get into? Yeah. Um, are you paying? Well, do you have to pay to get in here? You pay at the booth there and you can't drive in. You, you have to walk in. What's the cost of getting in? Four pounds. Four pounds. So you, for a family of children, um, if I had come here with my four children, it would cost me 24 pounds, my wife and I and four children, to get in. You've got four children, yeah. that is three, six, nine, twelve, that is twenty pounds. Twenty pounds, for six of us. Yes. Five years later, the efforts of the task force have brought little relief to jobless young blacks. We asked the deputy leader of the local council, the largest employer in Liverpool, about their responsibility in providing jobs for blacks. Well, I mean, the irony, of course, is, I mean, this Tory government has seen uh, industry after industry after industry closed down in the city. Um, this Tory government has seen young people with no future, no hope whatsoever. This Tory government has robbed over £500 million pounds from this city. That's over half a billion pounds since 1979. Uh, and then, as, a, as an alternative to all that, they come in and they plant trees and they grow shrubs. Now, whilst nobody's against them planting trees and growing shrubs, at the end of the day, in terms of permanent jobs, in terms of some hope for young people, obviously, whether it be Liverpool late or elsewhere, it provides nothing. After 81, I was involved with the Black Caucus who used to sit down at the city council meetings to try and get things done for black people. And every proposal we put through was nearly always rejected through Tony Byrne or Derek Hatton. And the, cl the clutch came when we applied for a housing grant for elderly housing that I called the River Avondale site. The government were prepared to give us a million pounds and the council only had to put 25% towards that. Now, right up until we were getting the money off the government, Hatton and his, and his cronies supported us the moment the money came through, they dropped the project and said, we'll put it back two years, and the money went somewhere else. 
The other point is, whenever there's where Damn. Corruption. I don't care what nobody framed that as. That's that's a leather. That's corruption. Oh yeah, we finna fake it till y'all get the money, and then as soon as the money come, it's it's hard. That's tough. <laughs> work in this community or in any community, none of the community is taken on board to do the work. They bring in outside contractors from Manchester, Birmingham, Wolverhampton, wherever, to build property in our community while we stand on the sideline. Now, when I put this to John Hamilton, the leader of the Labour Party, he was telling me all he could do was ask the contractors to take on the local community. And what I was saying is that's not good enough. If you, the city council, hold the purse strings, you are the one that dictates how the money is spent and where and when it should go. But they didn't want to deal with that policy. They prefer to back off. Quite truthfully, they don't want to absorb black people within the uh, employment figures. I think uh, trade unions have a major role to play, or they should have. I mean, you're like workers of the world, unite, unity is strength and all this business, the working class. But when you, especially in this city, where they have the reputation of being so powerful and so militant and that, but the record on equal opportunity is, is abysmal. I mean, they'll strike and they'll march for more pay for themselves, better conditions for themselves, but not for more black workers. And the other crucial thing about unions is, is that a lot of them have nomination job right nomination rights. So whenever vacancies do arise in their firms, they can nominate who gets the job. But it's their sons, it's their friends, it's their family. They never go on strike or march. Say yes, yeah, politically fueled man. Politics of it all is always crazy in something like this. More black or workers. Situations like these. There's more equality, and so I feel the trade unions badly let us down. We accept our responsibility for, for that situation. It's pointless trying to, to duck it, but we're not the only organisation who's been here. The City Council's been here for a long time. The Labour Party's been here a long time. And they haven't addressed those problems. What we've tried to do over the past few years is recognise our responsibility for that in the past and with our black members and the black community start to do things about it. It doesn't mean that everything we do then is right. Uh, necessarily, but we, we're trying to uh, at least make a stop. I know no, no, nothing of this. I always figure, man, I don't like to get political or anything of that such nature, but you need, you need people from the community if you want to change the community and make the right changes. You know what I'm saying? If you've never been down to these communities, if you ain't grow up in these communities, if you don't know what's needed, if you don't speak to people in these communities, how do you know what the community, what's best for the community itself? You get me? It don't make, it don't be making sense. You need the community in these positions of power to make change. This brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, etc. I know nothing about that at all, but I do certainly. Exactly. Brothers exactly. To, uh, at least make a stop. I know no, no, nothing of this brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, etc. I know nothing about that at all, but I do certainly accept, and I think that the majority of trade unions involved would also accept, that it, 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 we certainly haven't gone anywhere near far enough. Here we have a, a militant left-wing council, ever so socialist and ever so, you know, equal opportunities regarding women and black people. I'm already they giving us, they're not giving us nothing. It is no mystery, we're winning victory. Now tell me something, Mr. Right Wing Man, tell me something. How long you really feel we would have gravel and steel when so much murder can seal? When we wound can heal, when we feel the way we feel, feel the way we feel, eh? Well, there was Coxstead. And there was my side And a lot of other places where the police had to hide Well there was Brixton And there was Chapel Town And a lot of other places that was burned to the ground Burned to the ground Burned to the ground It is no mystery We're making history It is no mystery We're winning victory It is no mystery We're making history It is no mystery We're winning victory The council did set up a race relations unit, which at once plunged them into controversy with the local black community. Well, as far as I'm concerned, them into the council did set up a race relations unit, which at once plunged them into controversy with the local black community. Well, as far as I'm concerned, 
The function of the unit, I believe, is to serve the community and to advise the city council. And I believe that the priority for the unit is the question of unemployment, black unemployment. I believe the unit will be judged on its ability to gain employment for the black community. If for one moment the majority of the black community did not support the appointment or did not believe that I should be given a chance to carry out my policies, I wouldn't have been in Liverpool longer than two weeks. I believe I've got that overwhelming support. I spoke with Sam Bond this morning. He says, Sam who? Bond. <laughs> he ain't know who he was. He talked about I got an overwhelming support. Support. He ain't even know who he was. I spoke with Sam Bond this morning. He says, Sam who? Bond. Oh, yeah. He says, <laughs> he says he's got, he's got a lot of support. He says he's got this nice program and policy to make this place a better place to give jobs and all of that. What sort of support has he got? Well, I think the support that Sam Bond has shows in the fact that he does not visit the area. Can't he come here? He's quite free to come here, but he doesn't feel safe coming here. I mean, he is here supposedly to represent the black people of this area. And yet... See what I just said? If you're not from this area, it don't matter what color skin you are. If you're not from this area, and you don't be over here, how can you get the support of the people? How can you help? You know what I'm saying? He doesn't walk freely on the streets. It could be a, it could be a white man, European man. As long as he be in the community, walking around, then he gonna have the support because he down here, he's with us. He sees firsthand. He not in the office calling shots from above while people relay messages back and forth to him. While he has a middleman doing all the work. He's in there. Just like 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 if you in your daughter's life or your kid's life, it's much better for them than for you to be doing little things here and there, getting their hopes up. Oh, I'm going to come see you. I'm going to come. Just remove yourself completely if you're not going to be there 100%. Same case. Get out of there. I mean, you're not helping. you prolonging what's going on. you making it. I ain't going to say you're making it worse, but you're making it longer because you're not really here. You're just pretending. He does not come into any of our clubs or anywhere that we socialize. He has to walk anywhere with bodyguards. He has to bribe well, people to... Well, I don't blame him for walking with bodyguards, you know what I'm saying? Hey, do your thing, but uh, be here, though. He's a, he's a part of the government, allegedly, or whatever. That's, that's irrelevant. Bodyguards is irrelevant. But everything else he's saying... Bully him into a meeting, or attempt to bully him into a meeting. So, I would just say to Sam Bond, if you have the support that you say you have, if it is merely a vociferous minority who oppose you, then why aren't you doing your job? To your point about Sam Bond, Sam no. Bond did not set up the race unit. The black community and its representatives were the ones who made the, drew up the plans and who got it into motion. Sam Bond was just plucked out from the, the, the uh, Labour Party to take the head post. They wanted somebody who would pull party policy lines, but the actual uh, job specification was created from within this black community, from within the talents within the black people in this community. So Sam Bond and the Labour Party did not create it. There is a small... I think the hum human, humans are very simple. Be, when, speak, be present, and execute. Or show that you're trying to execute. Because actions speak louder than words across the board for any race, <laughs> for any creed of people, for all humans, actions speak louder than words. It's very simple. Group of... And I understand that this man right here is not the all-tell be-all. Like, where he's, 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 a, he's a puppet. He's a puppet. This is what I'm going to say. He a puppet. He was a puppet. 
They placed that man there just for, you know what I'm saying, for aesthetic purposes. And that don't matter, apparently. It didn't matter. <laughs> it's what I'm watching, at least. It didn't matter. Because the community sees through it. Hmm. Um, community workers opposed. And, oh, like I was saying, he's not the all tell be all. Like, I understand, like, his word is not does not lock something in. Like, he, there's levels above him that he has to go through to get something done. So, you know what I'm saying? He's just the face of it. He's just somewhere that people can focus their energy and anger towards instead of the real people calling shots. I was in disappointment, you know. I don't really wish to take up time um, discussing their involvement. It's obvious, and Sam admits that he doesn't know Liverpool very well. I've got about two more minutes. Is that obvious, right? he's a young man without mm. money. He doesn't know Liverpool very well. As soon as that topic came up, he was, "Oh, I got to get up out of here." I've got about two more minutes. Is that obvious, right? he's a young man without much experience. Not, not even of race relations, even of life. How do you, how do you square going over the heads of blacks in Liverpool? a unique area, and going all the way to London to import a candidate. You see, that is nothing new. I mean, I can think of three individuals who've been active in the Liverpool black community over the past few years, who've, got, who've had jobs in the GLC, in Lambeth, in Manchester. It's not new for blacks to go to other areas to do a job of work. I mean, you as a Londoner are here in Liverpool now doing a job of work. That is often the case. Uh, that, that No, it's, that's, it's, it's, not, it's not new, but it's... That's not what the question was. You, he said y'all outsourced him. Instead of looking within the community, y'all looked outside the community. That's what that's what the question was. That's what what that's what he said. He said nothing about that man looking for a job. It's y'all that hired him. <laughs> goes on but certainly if it was the case that Sam couldn't do the job be he from Liverpool or London or Manchester or anywhere else I'd be the first person to say bye bye Sam no question about it that's good cap that's good cap. I mean my bad that's terrible cap you're lying let me ask you one more question Sam have you any political affiliations <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> that's what he wanted to say no I remember the Labour Party. Has that anything to do with why you were chosen for the job? That's right. Uh, they have also said that I'm a member and supporter of militants. Are you? No. We are living in a city that is a working museum to racism in modern day. Liverpool 8 is actually, you could call it, we call it the homelands, right? To us, we are suffering apartheid. We're not employed in town. We're not a magistrate. We're not in the police force. We're not even on the city council. We are nowhere in town. So from our point of view, the system is apartheid against us. Now, if Bond is sincere as he says, I say this to him, as a black man, stand up and say that this city is racist and it's on the equivalent of South Africa. That yeah, man would be out of that office immediately saying that. After the revolt of 1981, the local community sought a political solution. I think one of the greatest problems we have in an area such as this is that the people who hold power want to choose the leaders. It can't happen. Those days are gone. We've had yeah, this is not a communist type situation. Had imposed rule, imposed government for so long. We're not taking it anymore. We're fighting back and we're saying we will choose our own leaders. We will not have the Sam Bonds speak for us. We know our problems. This, this is our future. Without these, we have no future. They are our future. And people- I say that with any community though. Like, people gotta let the, let the, let the people choose their own people. Of course, that are qualified, but like any community, it don't matter if black, white, Puerto Rican, Mexican, don't matter. People like me, Michael, and others have been described as very aggressive speakers. Yes. We have no choice but to be aggressive choose. speakers. We have two choices be aggressive speakers or be violent reactionary. 
violent reaction really gets us nowhere, only violence wins. But if we don't break out of this in a political way, these children, in five, ten years from now, they won't be throwing bricks like we did. They'll be talking to people like the IRA. And when a situation like that happens, there is no stopping it. And so before we can get to that stage, we must try and stop it. We must try to prevent it. I can talk to you as a man about the problems that I suffer as a black man, about the problems that my children and all black children are going to suffer in the future. I mean, I wish I knew the answers. And sadly, the only time, as I said, that they've taken notice of us is when we have risen to violence. From the brewers of Summer Shandy, Juicy Peach, right hey, for drinking. Hey. That's tough, man. I know there's a lot of Liverpool people watching. Pretty sure Liverpool is not this way anymore. Um, but let me know in the comments. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.